How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 11, and we have another big matchup, maybe even bigger this time, as we have to go on the road to play at Tennessee. And the Volunteers are sitting at 8-1 and one and number 4 in the country, and they're even favored to win this game. They are the lower overall team, and statistically, they're only better at us at creating turnovers, uh, as well as stopping the pass and running the football. They're fourth in the country in that aspect. Uh, but again, one loss. Was it impressive? Well, they lost to the South Carolina team badly that we just beat badly. So 14-42, and then we beat them 45-7. to So transitive property says that we should dominate in this game. I'm going to hope that that holds true because... Well, I want this one to be easy. The The more stressful it is for me, the worse it's going to be. And we need to win this one, certainly for our conference and our playoff hopes. Uh, we have a little bit of recruiting, not anything crazy. Three guys are ready for visits. And, well, Mizu will have to be where Mike Simmons will go. Uh, but Kendrick Adams and Keith Carey are now going to start being sent to the Florida game. Uh, <laughs> again, we're sending these guys to... Uh, ranked conference opponents so you know if one stops being ranked then we're gonna stop sending guys there for their visits so those three are scheduled and we're sitting honestly with a pretty solid class at this point we've signed some high overall players uh, and we're in decent positions with a bunch ryan turner is one that we're kind of fighting for illinois just took the lead off of a visit ed lester we're in the lead. I expect Florida to take the lead off of their visit this week or next week. I, I'm assuming, yeah, this is week 11. Uh, same thing here with Zach Moore. I expect North Carolina to jump up there. Victor Gray, same thing, but with Purdue, Lee Sims, same thing, except we're just trying to hold on until Clemson has their visit and hopefully we don't get locked out. And then this is the one I've been interested in, David Day. Uh, this is the guy again no scholarships for him so he's stuck at 73 percent lock we were 4,000 points behind just two weeks ago this week now uh just above 2,000 and we'll be down in the uh the low thousands after this so we're going to really jump in there and steal the lead away from nebraska and oklahoma and so we just continue to go down and see, a, you know, some normal stuff. And we'll start just giving points to guys that were in decent spots with Walter Moore. We'll get some points. And uh, I'm thinking probably we'll give them to, yeah, Aaron Wilson. Only 520 behind Texas State. Uh, give him the 700. And we should be able to start jumping back up in that race. Uh, and then I guess we'll give Florence Gaines or I'll find somebody to give the remaining 200 to. Now, this week, there are a lot of uh, top 25 matchups, I believe. We had a bunch of crazy stuff last week with losses. This week, again, us in Tennessee, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Nebraska, and Wisconsin, Stanford, USC, uh, Cal, Oregon, Florida, South Carolina, Illinois, Minnesota, a bunch of crazy stuff going on, so... We'll see a bunch of ranked teams lose, and hopefully, again, we see some upsets. And just to keep tabs on our Heisman watch, Marquise is in second, and Radon is in fourth. They're both trending upwards after the beatdown uh, that we managed to put on South Carolina in the last episode. All looking pretty solid, but uh, let's just try to hope that we can go in here to Rocky Top and win this one. Tennessee is a 91 overall with a 93 offense and a 90 defense. And we're going to wear the white just to go in there and trick them into thinking that we surrender early. <laughs> Tennessee, not a team known for crazy uniforms, but they do have the smoky gray ones and a couple of alternates. Uh, I'm not really sure I feel like I can make them wear the smoky gray ones. It just seems a little bit rude to do that to a team like Tennessee. Uh, but I do want them to change it up a little bit. So we're going to have them in the alternate. Get those orange pants on. I don't think the smoky gray helmet. I, honestly, it doesn't look too terrible. But we'll just keep the white helmet for them. And we'll see if we can, uh, I don't know, embarrass them at home. They're coming into this game with a pretty decent offense. They run the ball a ton. And they don't pass it much. Which should play into our strengths as we stop the run. But we can't stop the pass. Uh, defensively, they're pretty mediocre, not doing anything spectacular. They do have prospects visiting, so we'll try to shut that down for them. 
And their top players, a punter, a right guard, and a wide receiver, all in that mid-90 overall range. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that. This wide receiver through the season, only 12 catches for 160 yards and two touchdowns. So he's not being utilized. Again, a team that is running a ton on this season. And they've got injuries as well. A left guard and a right end out for sure. And an outside linebacker is probable with that knee cartilage tear. Oh my goodness. It's a snowy day here at Nayland Stadium. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm actually saying that right. Nayland? Nyland? Anyways, it's snowy here in Tennessee. So that could make things a little bit interesting. We are getting pretty late into the season as Tails does not fail us on the day and we will elect to kick the ball off into the 11 mile an hour wind. Maybe a bit of a tactical advantage for our team as we've worn white into the snowy game. And this is a very returnable kick for Larson who gets, oh my gosh, he breaks a tackle and he's still going. Almost gets out to the 35 there. Definitely worried about how strong this Tennessee team could be. Uh, we'll just have to hope to shut things down. We'll look to make them, uh, you know, kind of be forced into passing the ball because this is what I'm worried about. The running game working really well as Brandon Brown goes 30 yards on first down. He's already over 1,200 yards rushing on this season, just nine games into it. So definitely a guy that we have to look out for is it looks like it's going to be a screen. I don't think I'm going to get there in time. That was bad coverage by myself, and they get six yards out of the play. It's a second and four, two plays into the game, and Tennessee is already in field goal range, which is pretty dangerous. This one, a play action, and I left my man wide open. Gibson doesn't step out of bounds. Logan Smith able to knock him out before he gets into the end zone. But just like that, Tennessee right on the doorstep. They're going to go with the quarterback keeper. Smith gets shoved off, but eventually we bring him down. It's Aaron Jenkins getting the tackle. And I am going to bring the house on this play, hoping that they don't decide to pass it on second to goal. We rush everybody, and he rushes it out to the edge. And it's all too easy for Brandon Brown. He finds the end zone and Tennessee scores first as our defense did not look very good on that drive. Okay, number two, West Virginia has lost as they take their first of the season. Eight and one now for the Mountaineers. Oklahoma wins it 31 to 14. And Marquise is going to be back to return and he had a really good time returning the ball last game, at least on the punt returns. We'll see if any of that carries over. The blocking, phenomenal. The start is return, and Marquise Jackson is gone, so we won't even have to see the offense as he just runs that one 105 yards into the end zone. The blocking was impeccable. All I had to do was push forward on the thumbstick, and he was able to get in for six. So just like that, it's tied right back up. Well, maybe the defense on this second chance can do a little bit better. Going to be fielding the kick. There, just across the goal line, and it's a little bit better on the coverage. Their, uh, their blocking on those kicks is certainly pretty solid as I left a man wide open, and, well, didn't matter. They went to the guy I was trying to cover, and they found him for eight. Doesn't really feel like we have a whole lot going on so far. Second and two. This one's going to be handed off out towards the edge. Will Phillips can't get the tackle. So it's going to be another first down on the ground for Brandon Brown. That was not supposed to rhyme as much as it did. <laughs> oh, man. Just like that, they're almost at midfield again. And I'm sure they're looking to continue to run the ball. An option out towards the edge. The pitch is completed easily to him. He's able to find space for another four. My goodness, I don't know what we're going to be able to do to slow down this rushing attack. This one, another handoff out towards the edge. And thankfully, we find Josh Rush out there. Able to slow these guys down, at least temporarily enforce the third down. And I'm expecting the pass. They will go to the air. I got burned over the middle. The quarterback's not going to throw it until it's too late. And there's too many white jerseys in the area. Logan Smith is able to bat that one to the ground. And the punt team is going to be taking the field as they do have the wind at their back. So I expect this one just to go into the back of the end zone. And we will take our touchback, or no, is that going to be a beautiful punt inside the five, potentially? So we'll take over from the four. 
which is kind of disastrous. Uh, and we're just going to look for a home run ball on first down, hoping for the best. I'm going to throw this one up for Marquise. Don't want to take the sa sack in the safety. And uh, uh, let's just uh, ignore that play. Second and 10. Uh, try to put that one behind us. Uh, we'll run it up the middle to get positive yards and make it maybe a more manageable third down. And we do just that. And the wind could really play a factor here if we have to punt the ball away into it 11 miles an hour again. So they could win the uh, field position battle just like that. We will look to throw on this down. And we have Fontaine and he just dropped it. Hit him in the hands. And he can't hold on to it. Mike Fontaine can be a little bit disappointing at times. We're punting this one from the back of our end zone again into a strong headwind. This is going to be fielded across midfield with blockers. And they're going to get the ball there at the 34-yard line. So the defense did a good job to stop them. And then the offense, their first time out on the field, stalled out almost immediately. I'm expecting a sweep here. The quarterback handing it off out towards the edge. The blocking is impeccable, though. I knew what play was coming. We just couldn't stop it. Hoping to create a turnover, because otherwise Tennessee will be scoring points on this drive. On this first down, another option out towards the edge. Will Phillips slows him down so that Aaron Jenkins can get the tackle. And that one's the line of scrimmage. Just barely holding this volunteer team outside of the red zone is... Well, they make you want to think that they're running it to the left, but I could see a counter. No, it will be out towards the edge, and oh my gosh, the blocking is beautiful. There's a pancake from the tight end, and Brandon Brown waltzes into the end zone for his second touchdown of the game. Oh my goodness, that is not good. The defense struggling early. This isn't even going to be a fieldable kick. That's out of the back of the end zone. They had nothing that they wanted to do with Marquise Jackson on that. Well, we'll see what the offense can get done on their second trip down the field. Hopefully, at least. Got to hope for the best pressure coming, throwing it up. Williams can't hold on to it. And they get the tip drill interception. Oh, this is a terrible start to this game. Right on Randall now 0-3 to pass the ball. And uh, he's got an interception on top of that. This is just not going to plan. This can we do on this one again i just don't want to give up uh, another touchdown so they will step back looking to throw quarterback has all the time in the world and he has a man open over the middle oh we're getting eaten live backup running back is in the game right now as they will look to throw again and the quarterback just throws that one into the stands maybe felt some pressure and they're coming out here in this I formation as we will look to bring the blitz. It's a toss out towards the edge. Stiff arm cheese works for a little bit, but they still lose a yard. And we can maybe hope to stop the bleeding here by holding them to a field goal. It's not guaranteed, though. On third down, they look to throw and over the middle. Of course, Larson is open, burning his man and getting the first and goal. This is not going well. Six first downs for Tennessee to our zero at this point. First and goal coming. This one's going to be a run towards the edge, and I missed the tackle. Will Phillips is there to save the touchdown, but they still get even closer. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. I'm going to say thankfully because we need a breather. Uh, that did not go well for us. We're down a score, and it looks like it's about to be two. Continue just to stay in this goal line, man, because I don't want to see them throw for the touchdown this one to run up the middle and we will drop them for a loss so they gained two on the first one lost two on the second and it's third and goal unfortunately i can't trust that they will pass the ball here so we will have to continue to bring this pressure on this third down shifting the tight end to the right they step back looking to throw and they're gonna throw it but it's well short of the line to gain we push them out of bounds at the line of scrimmage and it's fourth down so a nice goal line stand from the defense there to just only give up three points as now Tennessee will have to kick into the wind and they should have a good kicker. Top player on their team, so they slot it through no problem. We got to remember that the only points that we have came off of a kick return. So maybe we need just pure magic from Marquise Jackson today. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to get it on that one, though. Well, we're at the 20-yard line to start this drive. Oh, they're going to bring pressure. We're sending them deep. 
hoping that this works out for us. Uh, I don't have the highest hope, but we got to try it anyways. The pressure is absolutely coming. I'm just going to throw it up, and Marquise can't get underneath it. Seemed like he kind of got stuck on that guy and couldn't get past. So the pass is just incomplete. I don't know if you guys saw that. Total yards, 156 for Tennessee. Just four for us at this point. Uh, we're going to try the read option, and that gives us a couple of positive yards. In fact, we more than just doubled the amount that we had in the first quarter. That brings up another third down for us, though, as we'll look to pass for it. I don't know if Radon has a completion this game. It certainly doesn't feel like it. And we might have another pick. Bradshaw, I don't know what just happened there. It seemed like he got held up or something, but it's another incompletion. Uh, I can't risk going for it here. Fourth and five at our own 25. I'm going to kick this one uh, into the wind. 11 mile an hour tailwinds. Let's just hope that we can get this one away and uh, maybe get something good on the field position. But no, they, of course, break a tackle. And they get near midfield. This is just falling apart in such a hurry. I would say that it's the snow messing us up, but I can't imagine Tennessee plays in the snow all that often either. This one a run towards the edge, and we do get the stop. Second down, this one's a handoff. They're going to go up the middle, and we're there to get the stop. So it's a third and long and a chance to get off the field. Now, can we hold them is going to be the real question. They're looking to throw, and I just got to make sure that I make this tackle. Trying as hard as I can not to miss it. It's a good open field tackle. It brings up a fourth down, and I think this one might be returnable for Marquise. They do have a good punter or kicker, one of the two. But again, kicking into that 11-mile-an-hour wind, and they're going to fake it. Are you kidding me? Oh, <laughs> I'm losing my mind. A beautiful pass from the punter, and they convert the fake punt. Oh, I'm going to start to cry. This is absurd. We cannot get off the field to save our lives. Expecting this to be a run to the right. They do try to bounce it out there and we get the tackle, but he falls forward and gets four yards. I'm just absolutely stunned at this point with the way that Tennessee is playing. It's phenomenal. Expecting a run to the right. We call it when we get there to stop the jet sweep. Force another third and long. So can we get off the field is the real question. I've got something in my eye, so I'm playing with one eye closed and... Oh my gosh, it's another big completion for him. I just don't know how we're going to win this game if we can't get off the field on defense and if the offense can't get a first down. We're doing a decent job stopping the run now, but then they're picking up clutch passes. Really starting to worry on this one. Looks like it's going to be a run, and it is. He cuts it back and finds the most perfect blocking for another first down as they take their first time out under two minutes. I'm bringing the pressure. Safety blitz time. Let's see if we can maybe get a sack. We need something. Or at least just stop them at the line of scrimmage. Even there, they get two yards, but they're forced to take their second time out. If we can hold them to a field goal, and I realize this is a pretty big if, I think we still have a decent chance. We do get the ball again. Oh, my gosh. Oh, how is that a pass? That should be a fumble. Oh, they got so lucky. Quarterback froze up, and then when he went to pitch the ball, the refs say it went forward, so no fumble for them. I was trying to say that if we can hold them to a field goal and then score to uh, end the half, we would be fine, but there I am giving up a free touchdown to the running back. We're getting obliterated. Well, it's full desperation mode for me at this point because uh, we won't have enough time to do anything else. Just got to hope for the best. We need home run plays often. And this could be one of them. Marquise Jackson of a foot race down the sideline. The back juke spin. Got four people off their feet, but one of them able to recover and get the tackle. Fortunately, that return gets us into some score to scoring range as we will continue to look to throw, hoping to find a completion. Marquise gets his first one of the game and Sean Stewart's into the end zone. Oh, I can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. Just back down to 10 points uh, on the deficit here. A minute and 22 left in the half. And that is, I'd say, very good news for me. It proves to me that we can score quickly today. Uh, we just have to have a few things go right. And I think we can maybe get a stop here 
We know they're going to be passing quite a bit with only a minute and 19 left. So let's uh, look towards the sky on this drive and hope that we can slow them down. They're throwing on first down. And so oh, that man just dropped it. He should have been wide open too. Going to go into the 3-3-5 for a little bit on this drive. See if that helps us defend the passes again. They'll look over the middle and... Oh my gosh, that pass was looking ripe to be intercepted, but nobody could get there. So just Tennessee continues to move the ball, this time putting themselves near the 30 as they will step back. Quarterbacks run it all over the place and found a man on the run. Just doesn't seem like we're able to do enough to slow this offense down. My goodness, not only that, they're burning clock as this one's thrown up in Sandcastle again, can't get there and they get another completion and they get out of bounds to stop the clock. Oh, maybe we get lucky. They're going to take a look at this one. We'll see. It kind of felt like he was out in real time. If they say... I think they're going to overturn this. No in the game. I think he was up in the air when he caught it and then lands out of bounds. Oh, thank goodness. We get a stop. Sandcastle getting burned there hurts quite a bit, but if we can slow these guys down at all, that feels real good. Trying to bring some pressure. Quarterback has a man, and he dropped it as well. The cold weather maybe getting to these guys' hands. We've got ourselves a third and ten to contend with. We gotta know what's coming. The question is, can we do anything to stop it? This one thrown, and we knock him out of bounds. I took a timeout uh, accidentally there. We'll force them to maybe punt this one away. Uh, as I gotta be worried for the fake on this. Because they've already done it once. What's to say they won't do it again? And thankfully this one is punted away and it looked almost shanked. Gotta say I'm really upset with myself for taking that time out. I just pressed it because I assumed the clock was going to be moving. And then I realized, oh wait, we knocked him out of bounds. So two timeouts and 46 seconds left for us to maybe get ourselves back into this one. We got to be moving quick and pretty often here. Y could be open. A was definitely open, but I'm just going to run with Radon. Make sure that we get the positive yards and get out of bounds to stop the clock there. Just going to continue to throw them up. Eventually, somebody's going to be out of position and we'll find somebody deep. I don't know when it'll happen, but it will happen. And Chad Bradshaw with an amazing catch is going to force us to go in the hurry up. I 100% thought that that was my second uh, interception of the game, but we get away with it there. And, well, we're going to find Malcolm Williams there for 21 more yards. I'm not making good or safe throws, but somehow they're being completed. So maybe a little bit of a miracle outside the pocket. I'm running. I'm trying to look for anybody. Nobody's there. So we'll take a couple positive yards and stop the clock once again. I got to remember, we do still have two timeouts, but not all that much time to work with. As we'll be looking for this one. Let's put Perkins on the slant route. I've seen a lot of names I don't recognize. Bo Lamb is in. Perkins, apparently Nichols, Williams... Uh, interesting wide receiver set. We're looking for Williams there in the front corner of the end zone, but I threw the ball too early, so Radon just sails it out of the back of the end zone. Still looking for that curl this time. It's going to be more keys that we're looking for. Or we'll just go over the middle, give it to Sean Stewart. He's already got one receiving touchdown. Now he's got a big catch that gives us a first and goal. And with 17 seconds, we're going to come up in the hurry up real quickly and see, can we get Mike Fontaine into the end zone? No. So we'll have to take our second timeout, which is 14 seconds remaining. Two yards out from the end zone. I'm really tempted to run, but honestly, a little bit scared. Let's see if I can bait them. Kind of a fake audible. I really want to run it here. We're going to audible to it. We're going to give it to Mike Fontaine. Mm, except we're going to change things up here. Make sure that I don't get caught out. This is really risky. I don't really like the uh, the play call, but we're doing it anyways. Second and goal. Mike Fontaine cutting it back. And oh, that did not work. We're going to have to take the timeout. It's third and goal. And I absolutely must score points on this drive. So if we throw it, the receiver better be in the end zone. And we got to hope for the best on this one. Third and goal. I'm going to be scrambling outside the pocket. Mike Fontaine's open, and he actually holds onto the ball. And he catches it in the end zone. And just like that, it's a three-point game. We've gotten the momentum back on our side, and I'm going to try to get a little bit cheeky. You guys know this is a play that I love to go for. Seven seconds. 
We go with the onside kick. Great recovery from Reed, but we'll see if we can force them just to put up a long field goal. They would be kicking into the uh, big 11 mile an hour wind, but before that, maybe we just see a Hail Mary. And it looks like that's exactly what it's going to be, so we'll get back in time and... Oh my gosh, they caught it. Well, that's why, uh, that's why it's a risky move to try to do what I do. It hasn't hurt us so far this season, but in the biggest game that we've been a part of yet, it really does hurt, and they score as time expires in the half. So that is awfully disappointing. Uh, we just got bossed, and we're back down 10, heading into the locker room. In the snow, just getting our butts beat today. Defense is doing very, very poorly. Uh, the offense is pretty, pretty atrocious as well. Uh, I just, the fact that we're even in this one is a real surprise to me, but the, also the fact that we gave up 31 points in the first half is completely unacceptable. We got hope to turn this thing around really, really quick. The good news is that we do start with the football. Uh, we're going to try to return this. 109 yards deep. Marquise Jackson not getting a whole lot in the way of blocks, but there they are. And he's down the sideline. One man to beat. He's going to have the right angle. Step back works just a little bit. And wow, am I glad I brought that out from the back of the end zone. If we can manage to score the touchdown, we'll be in a decent spot. All it would take would be one defensive stop for, uh, for us to have a chance to take the lead. Mike Fontaine with a great carry on first down. Gets us seven yards. And it's kind of crazy to me almost how much defense we have played so far in this game. Our offensive drives have been, for the most part, very, very quick. We're going to go with the read option on second and three. Again, something in my eye. So I'm playing with one eye closed. I just can't get it. It's like a piece of dirt or something. Let's try to keep running the football. First and goal. They're bringing some pressure. Mike Fontaine gets away from the initial pressure so that we still get positive yards. And I'll be honest, I'm going to be a little bit worried about this play call, but we're going to look to pass to him. He's dropped one easy catch. Uh, he's also managed to haul in a, a touchdown reception, so we'll see if we can find the running back. He's got it. He holds on to it, and he's at the goal line, third and goal. Not sure how he doesn't find the end zone, but it's going to be time for Radon to do just that. QB sneak on third down, and he's in no problem. A good push from the center. And just like that, we're back to a three-point game. Really kicking myself right now, though, because we would be in the lead right now. 28 to, uh, what was it, 24? If I just didn't go for that onside kick cheese. At least I proved that it can't hurt us. <laughs> That's the first time this season, but not a huge fan. We'll expect Tennessee to go back to their normal play calling. Which means probably a lot of runs as, yeah, again, expecting a run to the right here. We're bringing a blitz and he's going to cut it back. And oh my gosh, a one play touchdown, potentially Leon Sandcastle, the only guy that can save it. And I hit the button too early. Oh my God. Somebody take this controller out of my hands because I'm not doing us any favors right now. Oh, this is frustrating. We do all that work on offense and I give it away just like that. I need some more luck. I need the kick return team to be really good. I've seen a couple of pancakes. Marquise again with a chance. Can he get past the kicker? He can. One man to beat. The juke isn't going to be there. But again, a great return from the back of the end zone. And just like that, we have a chance to score again. <laughs> this game is getting more and more absurd as it goes on. Another first down. We'll look to the air. And Sean Stewart becoming a... Uh, Regularly called name in this game gets us 15 yards and a first and goal. We might not be scoring quite as quick as the Volunteers, but at least we're still scoring at this point. Run up the middle for Mike Fontaine. He's going to fall forward cup for a, a couple. He gets five that time. And we'll come out looking just to run it out towards the edge, which is a very, very interesting call for us, but we're going to try it anyways. See if the blocking can hold up and if Mike can get forward and... Well, he gets met at the line, but still gets a yard out of it. It's third and goal, and it's time for the read option. Hopefully, we can punch it in. Mike getting the handoff, and he's in. Oh, my gosh. He scored a lot of touchdowns in this game, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. I'm going to start going for two here. If we're going to be trading points, we might as well be trying to go for two-point conversions. 
to try and eliminate the deficit, and Radon Randall can just run in. They were just far enough back that I knew that we could just sprint in, and, well, we've slightly lowered the deficit. It's a two-point game here midway through the third quarter. <laughs> it's a quarter that's already seen 22 points score. They're going to try to return this one. Uh, again, that wind is really causing some problems with the, uh, the kick return. First down, we're going to bring some pressure, try to stop the run that is almost inevitably coming. Uh, the question is, where is it going to go to? No, they look to the air, and it's a completion to the running back for five. Well, I'm going to get into this, uh, I don't even know what to call it, sunk cost fallacy, where we're just going to blitz until they run the ball and we stop them at the line. There's the blitz. The blocking is incredible, though, and again, I'm just missing my tackles. They get another first down. We should have had them in a third and long, but instead, they're moving closer and closer towards midfield again. A run designed for the outside. He bounces it towards the middle and then bounces it back outside and gets 14. Nothing is going right in this one. Backup running back in once again, but they're going to step back looking to throw. Of course, when I bring the safety blitz, it's a broken tackle. And Will Phillips diving barely saves that from becoming a touchdown. They continue to have big plays, and there's nothing that we can do to stop them. Gotta just hope that we can hold them to a field goal, but I don't like our chances. Again, bringing that safety blitz, trying to get in there. It's an option out towards the edge, and I didn't expect him to get the pitch off. Oh my gosh, I'm making it so easy on him. Might be one of the worst games that I have played so far this season. Certainly not easy as, again, I'm going to return another one with Marquise. The kick return team has been phenomenal so far, so we're going to try to do whatever we can there. The only problem with returning these kicks as often as we are and as far as we have been is that Marquise is tired when the offense takes the field. So he has to sit out and rest, and we have to play backup wide receivers. So not the end of the world, but certainly doesn't help us. Second and two, we will look to pass it. And Marquis is wide open, and he's not going to break the tackle, but he still gets 19 yards and then gets hit out of bounds. Now we click under a minute left in this third quarter as I'm going to look to the read option, see if we can get some running yards for Radon, and... They will hold on to the ball through the contact. It gets five more yards for us. Go ahead and try this play action. Gotta hope for the best. They are bringing some pressure. I gotta get outside the pocket rolling. We have Malcolm Williams. Maybe Jonathan Williams open. It is Johnny, and he gets the first down to stop the clock. At this point, I'm definitely worried about how much time we do have left in this game, so we'll be in the hurry up for a little bit, hoping for the best. This could be a forced throw. Chad Bradshaw holds on to it and comes down with it inside the 15-yard line. So from the 12, we'll try to get this counter off. Again, getting as many plays as we can out of this third quarter is pretty important as Mike Fontaine. Again, as long as we're holding on to the ball is good. He gets seven yards. And I think we can get at least one more play out of this quarter. Hopefully a touchdown as we'll look again for the read option. Radon Randall's going to keep it, trying to find his way inside but just can't get there. So we get a yard out of the play and that's going to be the end of our third quarter. It's a close game. It's not close enough. And I don't like that we're behind heading into the fourth. So just going to step on the gas here and hope for the best. Third and two from the four yard line. And we're going right up the middle on first down. JJ Barr, our fullback, is at the halfback position for the play. So we know we have strength, but he has nowhere to go. They say it's a yard, but he's still shy of the line to gain we got to go for this. Fourth and two in the fourth quarter. We don't have time for anything else. So we will again hope for the best. As I'm going to send JJ Barr across. Jackson in motion. I'm going to get outside the pocket. Rolling out to the side. Radon gets into the end zone through the contact. That was awfully risky. Thank goodness there's no fumble. And it's back to a three-point game. But we're going to go for two and try to make it one. I wish that we didn't have to go for two, but that's just where we're at. And I got to be looking to scramble on all of these. They're bringing a lot of pressure, throwing it up, and Williams somehow catches it in the end zone. I just had to press a button to avoid the sack and make sure that we got it towards the end zone. And he just turns on his man, finds the ball, and holds on to it through the contact at the goal line. So it's just a one-point game now with 526 left in this fourth quarter. 
Again, kicking it so that it is returnable for them. Uh, and we did a decent job getting the stop that time, keeping them, I think, inside their own 20. At this point, one stop is all that we need from this defense, and we could be standing tall, looking real good. First and 10. They're going to pitch it out towards the edge. Kale Mackey can't get the tackle, but Jenkins is there to wrap him up, and we drop them for a loss of four on first down. It's going to allow us to get into this second and long situation, maybe a chance to force a third and long. As long as we don't give up a stupid pass play, they'll throw it away. So there it is, third and 14 to go. Definitely going to take a risk here, and I'm going to stay with the man coverage and hope that it works out. We know it's going to be a pass. What can we do to stop it? Well, that's enough. Fourth and 12, nothing doing for the falls there, and we're going to get the ball with a chance to take the lead. We have not been in the lead once this game, and they're far back in their own territory, punting again into the wind in this fourth quarter, so a very returnable kick for Marquise Jackson. If he can get a couple of blocks, he could be gone. And Marquise makes the final man miss. And Marquise Jackson is going to take it to the house. He's got a kick return. And now a 60-yard punt return added on top of that. And just like that, we are in the lead. And again, we're going to go for two to try, get, try to make it a full seven points with 420 left in this game. What an absolute comeback for us to get back into this one. Can we finish it off? Looking for Fontaine, he just dropped it! Oh, Mike Fontaine has been both saving us and killing us in this game. So it is just a five-point lead now for us. Oh, could have been six, should have been seven. As Tennessee's gonna take the touchback. This could come down to who has the final possession at this point, as if we just trade touchdowns. The lead will change with it. First down, they're looking to throw. Stepping back, quarterback all the time in the world and finds Larson over the middle, and he's got a first down very quickly. Really hope that the defense can get a stop for us so that we can just open up this lead late in the game, but I don't have the highest of hopes at this point. First and 10. What can we do to slow these guys down? This one's going to be a run out towards the edge. Kale Mackey and company are there, holding them just to three yards on the play. I am more than happy to give up three yards of play as long as that means we're not giving up a lot more than that. Don Riley, the beautiful jump on that one, finds Rust at the line of scrimmage and absolutely levels him. That's going to bring up a massive third and seven for us to try and get the stop. Tennessee has already faked one punt in this game, so I don't feel safe if it is fourth down, but man, Brad Ferwerda was wide open there. Nobody covering him. What about getting it off just before Durham Finch got to him? They're able to get the completion, move the chains, and get across midfield. And I'm going to expect a run on this first down. We'll try to jump the snap. And there it is. Durham Finch easily able to hold on to the running back and bring him down for a loss on first down. Uh, a wide receiver or a tight end is in it running back, I think, on this play. As it's going to be a run out towards the edge. He cuts it up and... Oh, I thought for a second it was fumbled, but for word it only gets four. It's again, a third and long for us. Gonna make a very risky play here, bringing out the 3-3-5, hoping that it's enough. They're gonna run the screen, a terrible decision. Kale Mackey's there to drop him for a loss of three, and it's fourth and 11. And I don't think they're in field goal range with the wind coming at them, so we might see them go for it. And that is exactly the case. They've converted one fourth down already in this game. Can they get another one? I kind of screwed up with the coverage on that. They're going to find a man, but he's short of the line again. It's a turnover on downs. And with less than two minutes to go in this game, we will take over with the lead and a chance to increase it. A field goal would be just fine in my books. Almost guarantee us a winner over time. And Mike Fontaine with a great carry on first down gets four yards and forces Tennessee to take their first time out. This is an absolutely massive battle for what could be the SEC and also a chance for that number one seed in the playoffs. Handing it off again to Mike Fontaine. He bowls over the first man and gets the call. He gets the spot. It's first and 10 and Tennessee takes their second timeout. Balls are starting to run out of time here in Rocky Top and I love that all too much. Mike Fontaine again holding on is all that matters. No fumbles here. They're forced to take their final timeout. 
We got a yard out of the play. Nine more would be enough for us to secure the victory. We're going to go with a read option on this one. Again, handing it off to Fontaine. And they drag him down awfully quickly. Third and sixth is a big play. Got to let the clock run down here, I think. As we are going to run this option on third and six. Every second matters. Radon's going to keep it. Can he get the blocking? No, cutting it back. There's no space. It's fourth and three. And I think I'm going to punt the ball away here. Ticking the time down. They're not going to have a whole lot of time to work with. We do have the wind at our back. I'm going to sky this one up so that there is a ton of hang time. And Frederick got pretty much all of it. Can we get a good bounce? No, it goes into the end zone. Six seconds left. We're up five. A touchdown wins it for Tennessee. This one comes down essentially to the last play. We know that it's going to be a pass. We know it should be a Hail Mary. They have no timeouts. It's not a Hail Mary. Can the coverage be good enough? All the time in the world for the quarterback there. We were just in the contain, and there it is. Oh, my goodness. Ball hits the turf. Zeros across the board on the clock there, and we're going to squeak out with a win on the road at Tennessee. A top five matchup, and we come out looking at, ugh, honestly, okay, but definitely vulnerable. Uh, and we just proved that we can definitely be beaten this season. Marquise Jackson, 395 kick return yards on the game. Obviously our player of the game uh, with a kick return and a punt return touchdown. And we get to leave the state of Tennessee with a, gosh, I don't want to say it, but honestly, a little bit of a lucky victory there. We came up clutch in the fourth quarter, scoring 14 unanswered there. Uh, after a decent third quarter and, uh, I mean, a, a bad first and second. 45 to 50 is the final score. We end up uh, looking terrible on offense. 102 rushing yards and 146 passing. But it's, of course, Marquise Jackson in the special teams, and he's carrying us to these victories. We gave up 278 through the air and 203 on the ground, so we didn't deserve to win the game. But he willed us to that victory anyways. 19 receiving yards and two total touchdowns the two total touchdowns of course uh the kick return and the punt return brandon bound the running back for tennessee 15 carries for 189 yards and three touchdowns and then 13 more yards receiving uh just honestly very very impressive from him but we're the team that comes out with the victory so we advance to nine and oh we'll drop tennessee down a couple of notches as they take their second loss of the season We'll go ahead and advance towards week 12 where we'll play Mizu at home. Uh, and I'm fairly certain that I saw a pretty big upset uh, down on the ticker during the middle of the game. There's no crazy news in the recruiting department. And uh, I got to say at this point, I think Marquise has won the Heisman in my books. Uh, if you would agree with me, right, real quick here, scroll on down, hit that like button. And if you disagree, tell me why in the comments because... I would be curious to know how somebody could say he doesn't deserve the Heisman Trophy at this point. Quick little preview. We are favored to beat Mizu, but let's go see if what I saw was correct in the upsets. I think it was Notre Dame. Uh, they were number three in the country last week. We'll take a look at the BCS poll. I don't see a Notre Dame. In fact, I don't see a lot of teams. West Virginia at number two took a loss. Tennessee at number four took a loss. It was, we scroll down Nebraska at number seven. There's Notre Dame at number three. So two, three, and four all losing. Seven and eight with Auburn losing to Georgia. Stanford loses to USC. Oregon loses to Cal. Oh my gosh. South Carolina loses to Florida. And Kansas State loses to Oklahoma State. Uh, that's just in the BCS. We have Texas, Minnesota, Ohio, and Kansas all uh, dropping out of the coaches' poll. So just absolutely crazy. Teams flying all over the place in the rankings. And at this point, I mean, how comfortable do we feel here? The only undefeated team, I believe, left in the country. You've got four lost teams right now in the top 25. And just what, one, two teams with one loss left in the top 10? That's uh, USF in West Virginia. So I think, honestly, at this point, we have earned ourselves a little bit of room where if we do slip up and lose a game, we should certainly still make the playoffs, if not still be, you know, able to contend for that top spot. 
So very, very nice there. I got to imagine that our boy is number one in the rankings. And no. Well, shoot. Along with you guys that are going down there and typing up your comments is why uh, Marquise doesn't deserve the Heisman. Uh, Kevin Jones left a comment and said, screw you, Marquise. I don't care if you had a great game. I had 79 receiving yards and 101 rushing yards. But, I mean, Mar Marquise with 395 kick return yards is apparently not impressive enough. Uh, him and Radon stay still. Unsurprisingly, the Tennessee running back flies up into third place after his pretty incredible game. And uh, let's just see. Yeah, 215 carries, 1,400 yards on the season. That is pretty monstrous. So it's a good game for us all around as we manage to hold on and come back and take the win. Uh, stay undefeated on the season. Three more games to go in the regular season. Uh, get us to that 12-0 mark heading into the postseason where we can then, you know, of course, win the conference championship and then go through an easy run through the playoffs, you know, as it is. But my goodness, unfortunately, that's going to be the end of this video. Again, if you enjoyed it, please feel free to like. And if you haven't already, head down and uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I say it every time because it's the truth, but those two things do truly help this channel grow. And uh, the bigger we get, the more crazy stuff we can do in the future. Uh, and maybe, you know, if we get poised for the next game, we could be in a, in a really good spot uh, when NCAA 22 or 23 comes out. But again, after you've gone ahead and done those two things, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter our community discord and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself all that being said though thank you guys so much for watching my name is goodmaster you guys are the teal boys and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning we'll see you later adios